Hi, I'm Nancy Rathbun from Completely Quilted, and today I'm going to be demonstrating English paper piecing. And so I'm going to show you the demonstration with some modern tools and techniques and modern fabrics. So you're going to want to start with your foundation, which is um, your papers. These are pre-cut, and so you can purchase them in packages depending on which size you'd like to use. Uh, I'm using the one and a quarter inch size, um, but you can use any of the sizes or styles available. So you're going to take your papers, and you're just going to put a little piece of scotch tape on the back. And this is going to be sticky so that it's not going to shift while you're cutting out your fabrics. So you're just going to place this down on several layers, just however many you feel comfortable cutting at once. So I'm going to take my add a quarter ruler and I'm just going to rest that little lip right up against the edge of the paper. So my ruler is not going to come any further. So it's going to be a perfect quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to take my first cut and pull my fabric away. And that's a quarter of an inch edge. And I just keep rotating the fabric in the paper and make all of my cuts and it goes really quickly with the edge of the ruler right on the edge of your paper. So now that we have all of our fabric pieces cut and we have our paper templates, we're ready to base these together. So you're going to take one of your paper templates and one of your uh, fabric hexagons that we cut and you're going to layer them together and you want your quarter of an inch all the way around and you kind of just eyeball this step. I like to pin this. It just takes one pin. I like to use clover applique pins. So now I'm ready to baste my hexagon. So I'm going to take the edge of my fabric and I'm just going to fold it over the edge of my paper. And I just kind of finger press that so it stays in place. And now I'm ready to fold over my second edge. And that's going to form just a nice little triangle of mitered point right there on the edge. I'm going to show you how to make a quilter's knot. So you hold your needle in your right hand and you take the end of the thread in your left. And you're just going to place that thread on your index finger. And with your thumb, you're just going to hold down the needle on top of the end of the thread and that secures it in place in your hand. And then you're going to want to wrap the thread around the needle multiple times, about three times. So one, two, three times. And I'm still pinching it and keeping everything tight. And I just move my thumb on top of that twisting that I did on the needle. And I just keep pinching it and I pull that needle through. So that twist and everything should still be in between my fingers. And I pull my needle away and you should be getting a loop that gets smaller and smaller. And then when I move my thumb out of the way, I have a little knot. Now that we're all threaded and we have a little quilter's knot, you're ready to condition your thread. So they make a product called Thread Heaven. It's really essential um, to um, kind of get rid of the headaches of your thread twisting. And you take your threaded needle and you just push your finger down um, on top of the thread and you just run it through. And basically it keeps any static electricity from building on your thread. I'm going to take my first stitch right in that corner through all of those layers. You sew through the paper and your fabrics and that first little knot keeps that miter in place. So my next stitch is going to come from the underside and I'm going to take it about halfway to my next point. You can see on this opposite side you kind of have a long basting stitch. I'm using a thread that's a darker color than all of my fabrics because I want to be able to see that easily when I take out my basting stitches in another step. And you're going to continue going all the way around your hexagon with these nice big basting stitches and folding your needle and making your mitered corners. So when we come to the end and I've done all of my corners, I take one last stitch in the middle to secure that. And I'm not going to make a knot here. I'm just going to simply cut off and leave a little tail because these stitches are going to be taken out 
eventually. So I'm going to demonstrate how to sew your English paper piece hexagons into a flower. So you're going to start with your center. So I've got my two pieces right sides together. and I'm going to take my first stitch through both corners. And you're not sewing through the paper at this point. Your needle's just going to glide right in that little bit that's hanging over the edge. So you're going to use a whip stitch, okay? and you're just going to take little stitches all the way across. So when you come to the end, you're going to want to make a little knot. So I'm going to take my last stitch through this point here of both of my hexagons, give it a little tug. I'm going to take another stitch this time, exact same spot through both corners. And I'm going to pull my loop, but I don't want to pull it all the way. I want to leave a nice big loop here. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to sew and take about three stitches inside that little loop. Once I have three stitches wrapped all in there, I'm going to pull it and tug it tight. And that was my knot that secured that corner. And when I open it up, I have one part of my flower secured around the edge. So once you have one of your hexagons sewn to the edge, you want to take your next hexagon. So you're going to position it right sides together again, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to start with the stitch in the corner. You're going to whip stitch it all the way to the edge and do your knot in the corner here. And when you open that up, you're going to have two pieces that kind of have a flap here. And so this is the next seam that we need to sew together. So what you do is you want to fold these pieces right sides together now. So when you fold this and put those corners together here, you just fold the center piece along those points and now you have a nice flat edge that you can stitch together. So when you come to the corners, you have three intersecting right here. So you want to make sure you take little stitches and go through all three pieces so that you don't have a hole right here. And I'm going to do another knot and there's my little knot to secure that opening. So when I fold that open, now I have three pieces sewn together. And I'm going to continue with my next pieces all the way around. When you're ready to take out your basing stitches, you're going to have a piece sewn around each edge of your octagon. So you just take a little scissors and you snip all of your basting stitches. So after every basting stitch is snipped, you'll be able to pull that paper out. So the paper doesn't stay in, it doesn't get washed, it gets taken out with the basting stitches. And once you've got a corner, you can just simply pull that out and it just pulls right out. And any basting stitches that are remaining, those can come out at that point too. So these pieces around the outside of my flower, those will be removed once I have octagons sewn around them. So each side needs to be whip stitched before you remove your paper. And this paper, even though it has little holes in it from your first set of basting stitches, can be used two or three more times. So now that I have some of my rows sewn together, you can see that this flower here, the center has already been removed. And the next piece I can remove is this one here because I have edges whip stitched all the way around. So once you have all of your flowers um, sewn together um, in individual flowers, I'm going to demonstrate how you sew them into rows and then build your quilt or table runner or whatever you're going to make out of your paper pieced flowers. So you can see right here that I am making a diamond shape and I have sort of a green little outer border. And if I separate these, you can see that they're actually sewn into rows. So it's the same method as when you're sewing the individual hexagons um, around the edge. You're going to start um, right sides together. So say I'm sewing this green piece to this orange piece here. I'll start with this section here, right sides together, and then I take my stitches along the edge, 
And then when I need to sew my next seam, I'll just have to fold that so that I can get the next seam sewn together. So once I have my rows all sewn together, then I can sew those rows together, just like you would a normal quilt. So these were all piece and fit together just like this when it's all done. I'm Nancy from Completely Quilted. Thank you for watching my English paper piecing demo. We have patterns coming soon. You can visit us online at www.completelyquilted.com or visit us in Ponca City, Oklahoma. Our store hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays from 10 to 4.